Is this thing on? Are we on? Oh. Okay. Well, okay. Well, uh, good day, eh? and uh, welcome to the Great White North. It's actually Great White North America now. Eh? Yeah, okay. Okay, this is my sister, Bub. Hey, I'm uh, Bub, and this is my brother, Doom. And, uh, like, our dad was uh, Bob and Doug McKenzie. You might have heard of them. <laughs> Both of them are our dads. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of hosers, those guys. Okay, anyway, uh, today's topic. Do we have one topic or two? We have two topics today. So okay. we have. Uh, What's the first topic? Well, we've got this first one is this fancy print we did here, eh? And uh, we did this, what, last week? Yeah, I don't know. It was before the storm. That's kind of how life is. You like, did it last the week? the storm or after the storm. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, so we did this print. It's called uh, Codfish Ate the Moon. Codfish? I kissed a codfish once in Newfoundland. Yeah, well, codfish is the only thing I'll kiss. And then I married her. Ha! 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't marry a fish. <laughs> well, that's our sister. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, okay, let's get back to okay, it. What's okay, what's this? Serious what? business here. Okay. okay, topic two. There's a big blizzard that passed through here, right? Yeah, you might have noticed. You might have noticed down there. What do they call it? They call it the, the Arctic. Oh, yeah. Arctic French. Some kind of Arctic. You can see, like, it comes from, like, way up there at the top. Way up here. Right up by that black thing, it started there, and then it moved down here through the Great White North, and then it crossed the border here, and it went all the way down. Oh, we don't even have it on their map. No. <laughs> Where's Texas, anyway? On I don't this? know, somewhere down here. Okay, anyway, back to the topic at hand. The problem we had was that the tubes of the Internet froze, and we deal with this a lot in Canada, eh? maybe not so much down south. So we thought we'd show you how to free up the tubes of the internet, and then we're going we're gonna to be able to, once they're open and, and breathing, you know, they, they breathe like eels. Yeah, you know when you, like, breathe in deep and your, your, no, your snot freezes in your nose? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know exactly yeah, what yeah. you're talking it's about. It's like that. So we got to clear yeah, it anyway, out. So you got to clear it out. So we're going to show you how to clear it out, basically using bacon, bacon grease and, and uh, um, duct tape. Duct tape, yes. And then, so watch. Okay, so first you gotta take your camp stove, okay? And uh, you got a nice skillet. Whoa. Oh man. It's alive. Dude. Okay, and then you need your wires, right? So you get your wires and you just gotta get them. You get them cooking. Yeah, you gotta get them cooking. And make sure the grease is hot before you put it in there, right? And you wanna be careful because that baking grease, it spits up at you. Okay, and then the other thing, this is really important. This is called a SCA modulation generator. Now, some people say that that says Socialist Canada A, but it actually stands for Scientific Canadian A, modulation generator. So we use this to get the video inside of the internet. And he's got the text. This, this is kind of like the internet here. Yeah, how's those cooking? Yeah, no, they're warming up. Do you like it crispy or do you like it too? Oh, really crispy. Crispy, okay. Okay, okay, let's get ready here. Okay, we need some tape. We get the multicolored duct tape here. Multi-purpose this stuff. Multi-purpose too, you can fix anything with this stuff. Okay, well let's get some of that stuff out. I'll show you how to hook it up really quick. You wanna be careful, because like, it does get pretty warm. There's one day. Okay. Okay, and you'll notice, you'll notice that we have a, there's a padlock here. It's a password, it's like a, Yeah, you're going to need a password. Your brother's name. Cod? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, that was the name of your first pet. Okay, okay so let's, let's get this hooked up. Quit screwing around. Yeah, okay. I'm not screwing around, you're screwing around, you holder. Uh, okay, right. tape that on with the red stuff. Okay, now you got to get the next wire, and it's really important to get the next wire. Here's okay. the right one, so, and uh, use the blue tape on it, eh? Yeah. Uh, Which one? I think, uh, no, that's the you one. sure? Yeah, it's got the yellow, okay, stick it. yellow end there. Okay. All right, put it in. Yeah. All right, there we go. That. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's not going nowhere. All right, and then, like, the piece de resistance, as they say in Quebec, you use the silver duct tape for the last wire. 
This is the good stuff. This is the good stuff. All right, let's go. Okay. Which one? Nah. Nope. Yep. Mm. Come on, you're the, you're the guy that got in the grade hey, 10. Hey, 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 you're hey. You're the scientific Okay, person. I got it, I got it, I got it. Here we go. All right. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay, that's about right. Yeah. To look good. I'm going to turn good. it on now. You got to turn it up full blast there. Is it working? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, we're going to put this up here. Still then, looking pretty black there, Dougie. No, no, it'll work. Don't worry. Okay, I'm just gonna plug this in. Okay, and then I just put it right there. There you go. Yeah, no, you wanna let them see it. You got it. Okay, go. and then we just plug this in the back. Okay. All right. Okay, ready? I'd say Moment hit it. Moment of truth. Hit it. Hello and welcome to Watch A Studio. We are coming to you from Vancouver Island in beautiful British Columbia from the traditional territories of the Comox and Pentlatch Coast Salish people where we are grateful to live, work, play, create um, in this beautiful land that we get to call home. We are so excited to be here with Print Austin bringing you this print that we're building called Codfish Ate the Moon by Rodney Sayers, a local artist here on Vancouver Island. And so today what we'll do is we'll show you a little warp speed, bringing you up to this point here where we are at putting on our last uh, layer, our last print. Um, and we're using all equipment that is uh, available for you to learn how to build or to have built through our program Screen the World. Um, and we'll chat a little bit more about that later as well. Also get a chance to speak with Rodney and learn a little bit more about his print, his process, and where, where this beautiful artwork comes from. So we're excited to bring this to you. Our whole team is here and yeah, looking forward to, to sharing with you all. Greetings, Uklama Kahatua Hupachaset Ah. My name is Rod Sayers Kahatua, and I am from the Hupachaset First Nations of People. Um, I want to thank the Wachie Studios and Print Austin for involving me in this project. Um, thanks to Andy McDougall and his team in Courtney, and thanks to the crew in Austin at Print Austin. Uh, it's been a lot of fun being involved with the project and I want to talk a little bit about the artwork that has been uh, produced by Andy McDougall and his out <coughs> outlandish team, <laughs> outstanding team uh, at Wachie Studios. Um, the, uh, the artwork that has been depicted comes from this language book. Among other things, I am an amateur linguist and 
that artwork was part of a project that I illustrated uh, with the fluent speakers of Hupachasset in a language revitalization and preservation project. Uh, it was called The Water Is Our Highway, and it was one of the illustrations that was featured in that book, uh, which has been brought to life in this Print Austin project. Um, so the codfish ate the moon. Uh, it's actually the, uh, the eclipse of the moon. So as you may understand falsely that the uh, eclipse of the moon is caused by a meteorological phenomena of the Earth's shadow being cast onto the moon. Not so. As we know here, the real story is, is the codfish reaches up into the sky and eats the moon, causing the lunar eclipse. So that is what this artwork is depicting. And there you go. That's the background of the artwork. And thanks again for... It's been an honor to be involved with this project and hope you all enjoyed it and hope and thanks for listening. Bye. All right. And again, we'll, if you have questions for Rod later, um, we'll be happy to field some of those again uh, as we near the end here. Um, for now, I'm going to pass you over to Scott and Adrian, um, who are really are developers for Screen the World. So between the two of them, they have um, helped to design the equipment, um, build so many <laughs> different um, pieces, and have also been working to record videos um, that will teach you how to make your own and then how to use it. And so I'm gonna toss the, the mic over that way and they can give you a little bit more info there. Thank you, Liv. Uh -huh. So the exciting thing about all the printing that we've showed you here at Pranastum is it's made with DIY equipment. And you can do that on your own as well from home. Yeah, everything you see here, the t-shirt jig, our exposing frame, our light stand, Adrian and I basically built all of these things using very little tools. And this is all basically made from stuff that you can find around your home or just go to a home hardware store and pick up some plywood, two by four. Uh, we're using copper here that we just soldered together as our counterweight system. It's all very simple to put together. Yeah. Yeah, so to help um, explain how you can actually do this from home, we've been building out a website um, for you. I'm just gonna share you my screen here. So this is kind of like the whole screen the world idea in that anyone um, anywhere can actually start to screen printing on their own. Um, so we have this awesome website set up and um, our goal is to move towards um, premium membership where you can get access to all of these videos. Um, so how to set up a studio, um, all of these processes. So you know like exactly what Andy's been and Gabe have been doing, but a step-by-step -step so you can do it on your own from home. Um, as well as an overview of um, what we like to call the eight steps of printing um, and diving into each of these steps. Um, just to get you started. So we're, I guess, just talking about our website here and that you can get started today um, and learn how to make this yourself and get started doing this. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about the equipment, please drop us a line because this is our goal is to get you screen printing. And it's only gonna get better from this point forward. Uh, our plan is to keep adding more and more and increasing the quality as well. And all the feedback we get, we will just use to help develop the system out. Working hard every day just to bring, make it nice and simple. And so anyone, anywhere can do this. Yeah, so what sort of tools do you need to build this? That's a great question. Um, the tools we've used, honestly, were just a skill saw, um, a drill. We, we had a table saw to cut some of the pieces of plywood, mm -hmm. um, but nothing fancy, like yeah, a skill saw, like Adrian said, a drill. It's pretty simple stuff. And 
I'm not sure about where you guys are, but a lot of our hardware stores will cut larger pieces of wood for us. You just give them the dimension and they'll just do it right there. And then you can bring home smaller pieces and just put it together with your hardware and your power tools. Wow. Um, and then the question we just got on, how do you use it? Um, there isn't a quick, simple answer for that, I guess. Um, you've been seeing Andy use it. And uh, on our website, we do have how-to videos that do walk you through step-by-step -step on how to use it. I think we may have time at the end to show a little bit about the t-shirt jig. Uh, depends how a hand he makes over on the vacuum table he's using right now. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, and you can actually see Andy still printing right now. Um, so that's the other equipment uh, that's part of this is a vacuum table and that's designed for flat stock or for paper um, printing. Whereas this that we have right here is designed for t-shirts so that you can actually slide it on and then put a t-shirt on it. And actually, if you look behind Adrian, we have a washout booth that we also built. And it's basically made mostly from plywood and a couple two by twos. But yeah, it has a drain. It can be hooked up to any water source and filter filtration system, but it's not that hard to build. We'll have eventually have instructions along with videos up on the website. Uh, we're going for that IKEA kind of look, but not as complicated. <laughs> Yeah, so I guess needless to say, we're super excited to be showing you what we built and what we can offer you on getting started in screen printing. Yeah, I guess that's all we have to say, Liv, unless you wanted to add anything else, but then we'll send it back to you. We're back. Um, it turns out I cut Rod off. <laughs> so I'm going to put him on the spot and bring him back over to chat a little bit more. And you know, actually, if you do have questions about the art um, or questions for Rod specifically, um, please feel free to put them in the chat. He'll see them from here and he can start answering some of those as well. Okay, I'm going to regale you with stories of my childhood. No, I'm not. Uh, this drawing was, uh, is this, I have a formal education in art, but these drawings uh, are part of uh, an ongoing investigation uh, here in what they call the Pacific Northwest, um, even though we're in the Southwest of Canada, we, it's called the Pacific Northwest. Um, if you're not familiar with it, the uh, First Nations do have an artistic style, styling, if you will, if I may be so bold as to use the word style. I don't really like that word, but I guess it's the easiest way to explain it. Um, so there is a very highly evolved uh, design system that we use to make our traditional motifs. So, and that's typical all the way from Washington State right up through to Alaska on the Pacific Coast. So uh, very distinctive, um, method of design, uh, very distinctive motifs that use that are used to build the building blocks. I like to call them. Um, I've broken away from that uh, in the New Chanoth, where I'm from. We our rules are a little bit looser. Um, the late Art Thompson was a fabulous artist, and he used to say, "We don't have to follow those rules as strictly as everybody else." So uh, I took his uh, words and. So my drawings, uh, my stylings, if you will, are, are much different than what you would typically see in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, the black lines that you see that uh, the codfish, uh, the, the color that Andy's pulling right now, uh, that would be considered the main form line, primary form line, if you go by the technical speak. So the primary form lines, and that's um, the basis of my drawings. So uh, there are many different motifs that would usually be used uh, within the design motif. Uh, the other building blocks, there's different forms. We call them U-forms, S-forms, ovoids, just to name a few. Uh, trigons, I like that word. So uh, I don't utilize those very often. 
Um, I've pared down my drawings uh, to make them very graphic line drawings uh, concentrating on the form line. So if you see my work, it is, uh, it is different than much of what you'll see here on the West Coast. Uh, I'm certainly not the only one working like this. There are many fantastic artists uh, working. I understand that some of them are watching today. How's it going out there? Um, so um, this, this is how I work. Um, and, you know, it's, it's an ongoing thing. The, the art of the New Channel and the Pacific Northwest Coast uh, artists uh, is constantly changing. Oh, I'm getting waved at. So I think Andy's going to take over again. Is that I think that's what's happening. So yeah, so there's a bit of background for, for my artwork and, uh, and it will continue to evolve. And, you know, I make jewelry, I make monumental sculpture. Uh, so it, uh, my work uh, varies widely and uh, is influenced by, by modern influences. So I'm influenced by jazz. So different things, popular culture, The Simpsons. So uh, many things influence my work. And no, oh, I'm sad that I can keep talking. I'm running out of things to say. Um, oh, Andy's saying wrap it up, or is he saying? Okay, he's coming back in. All right, there you go. Well, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll see you all in a bit. Okay, we're almost to the end of the run here. And uh, my sidekick Gabe here, she's been working so hard on this print, but she's never had a chance to print it yet. So she, she said, can she print some? So we've left a few at the end here. Gabe's gonna take over. And I'll stand to the side and hurl insults at her. She's much used to this. <laughs> now, Gabe is a student, uh, two years at North Allen College. Yeah, just graduated. Just graduated, and she's looking to complete another two years at a university of her choice. Yes. ASCAP, she says, which is on the east coast of Canada. Yeah, and uh, Rod and Emily are both um, ah, graduates yes. up there as well. The graduate students upstairs. Yeah. So it must be good because we'll look at how good Rod is and how good Emily are as artists and people. I think there's hope for you. Okay. <laughs> so uh, what's our time like? How are we doing, everybody? We're halfway through. Halfway through. And my eyesight is so bad, I can't read the questions here. But if there were any questions about the print side of it, Ah, yes. Is there any concerns about the ink adhering to that holographic paper? Well, funny you should ask. The question was, how does the ink stick to the holographic foil? Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to do it to you, but I'm just going to do a little ad here. This is from, where am I at here? I just, no, which one am I looking at? Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. It's probably backwards in the feed there. This stuff here is called Stickapoo Joy Juice. And my, uh, my cousin, Bud Martin, over at Speedball Art Products, he's my hillbilly cousin over there, he whipped up this stuff here. And what happens is if we pour this into the Speedball Acrylic ink, uh, we put one part this and two parts of the ink, which we did before we started. This will stick onto holographic foil. Um, and and we, we did that originally for the holographic foil, but then we did some experiments on other materials. And what do you know? It sticks really, really good onto vinyl. So you can make stickers with the uh, speedball inks. Uh, it also sticks onto coroplast. This is a corrugated part, cardboard that they use for election signs. Wash that out from my mouth. No more elections for a couple of years. Uh, Sintra and some of the other plastics. So um, we highly recommend it. You can get it at your art stores, wherever you buy your uh, speedball products. And uh, yeah, Bud Martin and I, we're actually, the next time that we get together, 
we've already written it, but it's uh, a little ditty called, uh, they call it that good old stick of who. And the people that refuse it are few. You may recognize this song. It's not going to be long. We were at the end of our hour. So anyway, that's my little commercial for that. Um, how are we doing there, Gabe? All done. We're all done, our run. So now, as we fill this other time up, I think what we're going to do is maybe answer some questions. But we wanted to have a little fun at the end. We're going to... We burned this this morning when we came in, but uh, Screen the World, that's the story, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to print a couple of shirts with this now. So uh, Dave's going to give you a tutorial on how to clean up the ink, and we're going to go set this up. We're going over there. We're going here. Oh, here, come over here. Shows you how portable this is. You can set up anywhere. You can set it up anywhere, and that's part of the idea. Um, I've been teaching screen printing quite a long time. And most of the time it required me to be there. And uh, that's the whole idea behind Screen the World is that we're, we're trying to capture the lessons and uh, some of the materials and some of the things that we're going to use and uh, put it into one package that anybody can access anywhere in the world. And uh, we've got some friends in uh, universities that are, you know, bemoaning the fact that they can't go into labs and print. And so this is kind of an answer to that too, because if you really want to do it, you can easily make this stuff. And uh, it all kind of goes away. we we'll just take this one down. I'm going to set the other one up really fast. Being in a print shop real time. Keep them going. Yeah. No, no, it drives about the same speed. And then the other thing is, we found that the uh, it, it actually you could use it after you mix it up. I mean, I, I wouldn't normally when we hardly do We usually use it for about eight hours, but uh, but they they tried it a couple of over a couple of days, and uh, it's pretty good. Got some shirts. I need a couple of lamps. Okay, can you find us some textile? Sorry? Holographic coil. I can't see the. Yeah, do we have some shirts? Okay. Well, they're setting up. I'm just learning that I've been answering all of your questions in the wrong spot. So I'm going to scroll back up to the top and answer some of these for you. Um, so I know right away there was a question about the counterweight. Um, and so the counterweight that Andy was using was super fancy, super high tech. It's a cup full of pennies and loose screws. Um, we also use like a fishing weight um, hey, at times. You can't get these pennies anymore. No. <laughs> It's a hot commodity. Um, but really the trick is to find the balance for where, um, where the, the screen and the, and the weight will kind of hold um, comfortably so that you can pull your screen up and let it down um, as you need. Um, another question was about the ink. So we just answered that. The stick of poo joy juice is what we use to allow the ink to stick to the, the holographic foil. Um, and we are using Speedball acrylic ink. Um, the foil paper is, um, is paper made by our friends at Exceptional Papers, um, and you can find them online. Um, they have all kinds of different 
um, patterns in the foil. So there's a really, uh, lots of fun to play with there. Um, anything else that I missed? Um, hey Liv, so I, there was a question I saw from Tina, if Andy and Gabe were printing on the vacuum table and um, I mean, yes. And now that Andy's not using it, we can actually show it off. The vacuum table is actually two pieces. You have the work surface where the printing happens. And then you have this hinge base, which you use to adjust the register. It basically just sits on the end here and then you can slide this around and with these knobs, lock it in wherever the register lines up. It's pretty easy to build. It's, again, mostly plywood, but this, there's strips around the edge and then all below here is hollow and then this is just a piece of laminate and then we drill the million holes through the top of this thing. That's probably the most tedious job I've ever done. <laughs> More like, more like 270 holes or something, but yeah. it's easy to do at home. It works really well, and it's very simple to build. And again, it has the same copper counterweight, where you just basically can knock it down to that, and then it stores away. You can just basically slide this underneath your bed, or put it up on the shelf, or wherever you have space for it. Is there any questions about the vacuum table? I can see a big smiley face in the chat. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's all we have, Liv. All right. <laughs> um, cool. Are, are there any other questions that people have in general about um, what we're doing here in Screen the World? And maybe we've been so thorough that. <laughs> that all your questions have been answered. Oh, I hear Andy saying he's ready. We on? Yep. So we got this set up here. This is the little, uh, we call it the T-Rex t-shirt jig. And um, I don't know how long that took us maybe and then so we had it on backwards, put it on the right side. So we've uh, set the jig up here and uh, online you'll find all the instructions on doing that. We're using uh, speedball fabric ink and uh, this stuff will air dry, it's kind of cool. And then air dries and then uh, basically really all you have to do is put it into a dryer at home or go down to a commercial dryer Pretty good. So there we go. Uh, can't tell what I'm looking at. Uh, there's the shirt. You just lay it down on here. So take a shirt. Down side to slide, front side up. On we go. And we pull his shirt on until it's pulled the top of the flatten. And once you got it in place, bring the top down. And I'm gonna pull it once and then just hit it again for good luck. Lift it up, slide it back. And that's how easy it is. And then you could just at home, you can just hang these somewhere until they dry. And then throw them into a dryer, uh, as hot as you can get it for about an hour. And that'll heat set the ink so that they'll last through a wash. Actually, many washes. We use a lot of speedball ink here for a lot of our commercial customers. And it's a nice ink, cleans up easy. We love it when we're working with students because students always seem to get it all over their hands, the little kids. So they can just go and wash it up. And so does Andy sometimes. Sometimes. Not very <laughs> But it still turned out perfectly. Is everybody having fun? Let's see, are there any more questions there? Maybe I can read this now. Uh, 
Just some smiley faces. Yeah. Okay. Is the membership, what was that one you just flicked on there? Yeah, it was a one-time payment. Yeah, it's a, what we're doing about this membership thing right now is that we do need, we've been putting a lot of effort into this and we do want it to pay for itself a little bit. We thought um, to start with, we put it up. If you join now, and I don't know how long the, the offer will go, but if you join now, you pony up a little bit now and stick with us, you'll have unlimited access to everything on the site and um, we'd be just happy to help you get into screen printing wherever you are in the world. So um, I hope you enjoyed this show and I want to thank everybody here. I want to thank Gabe. I want to thank upstairs Rod. I want to thank uh, Emily. I want to thank Livia. I want to thank uh, Scott. I want to thank Adrian. And back in uh, Austin there, I want to thank uh, Emily, and I think Kathy, Kathy was in on this, Kathy Savage, and uh, the, the, most, the most thankful I am to is to my friend Paloma, who is, uh, puts this whole deal together, and I know we talked a number of years ago about coming down to Austin to do it, and I, I really, really wanted to go to the Printmakers Ball, because I heard all about that, and uh, hang out with uh, all you beautiful people, and uh, talk printing, and you know, have fun, but it, I think this is uh, just like being there, if I can steal a phrase from a movie, but um, it's been great, it truly has. Switch to somebody else, I'm gonna start crying. Oh yeah, okay. Team. Come on, you guys. <laughs> can they see us? Oh, yeah. They can hear us, too. Yeah. Well, you will be oh, well, why don't you say, say something about it? Are we on? We're on. No. We're on. Okay, one other thing. In uh, We talked to Rod and we talked to the group here. We're going to donate 15 of these prints to Print Austin. We're going to send them down to Paloma. I don't know how you're going to get rid of them, but you can, you can auction them off or you can have a raffle or you can do something like that. Uh, be signed and numbered, uh, extra special print for the whole program and take the money and put it into something good. Uh, next year's Print Austin maybe or the Beer Fund, if we come down, you might need some help there. But um, <laughs> we're so, so happy to have done this. So happy. I think we're all in. Okay, well, from all of us here in Vancouver Island, uh, it's been a pleasure, and yeah, we hope to see you all again maybe next year in person. In person.